Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Grace with the Intuitive Lens. We're going over the weekly astrology here on YouTube. Let's open up to October. Um, we have a very powerful week, a, a pretty intense week, not going to lie. There's lots of things that are shifting energetically. This weekend, we have the new moon eclipse in Libra. This is the energy of profound beginnings. Uh, this is the first new moon eclipse since the south node has moved into Libra. South node refers to our karmic past, our collective karmic past. So this makes me think about like, where in the past have we been appeasing? Libra is sort of like an appeasing energy. Libra is harmony and balance. Libra wants to be balanced. It makes me think about collectively because we also have this very intense Pluto transit it's moving into the sign of Aquarius uh, next year. Pluto is a generational planet. It you know, can take as many as 30 years in a single sign. Uh, lately, it's been transgressing, like moving through some signs that take you know, just 10, 11, 12 years. So if you're in my generation, born in the 90s, um, it was in Scorpio. And just in the last 30 years, we've seen Pluto in Scorpio, Sagittarius. Now it's been in Capricorn the last 11, 12 years. And we're going to be moving into Aquarius, the sign of innovation, friendship, society, the greater good. With Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto again is like power structures, intensity, transformation. The last 10 years, 12 years have been very innovative, the kind of technologies that we've come up with, the kind of gains we've made as a society, but we've also seen, seen some really um, unstable times. I think that with, with Pluto doing what it's doing right now, collectively, things may continue to appear quite unstable. But think of it this way. And I'm really leaning on ideas and principles from Adrienne Marie Brown, who's a futurist, a black feminist, and an agent for social change. I love the way that she describes change. You know, in parts of her book, Emergent Strategy, she'll say, we have to look at systems, resilient systems around us. We look at nature to see how have these other systems been so resilient and long lasting. And with Pluto moving into Aquarius for the next 20 years, starting next year, we're going to all be asking these kinds of questions. What are the structures in my life? How are they sustainable? How can they be long lasting? How am I thinking about the future and also future generations? So especially when we look, think of like high level, um, you know, climate uh, awareness and uh, the awareness of financial systems, global financial systems and things like that. And the reason I'm talking about Pluto so much and I'm talking about next year, but this Tuesday, it goes direct. It's been in retrograde since the beginning of the year. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me. But it's been retrograde for quite some time in Capricorn. And it's in those like final degrees of Capricorn. I want all my Capricorn stelliums to raise their hands at this moment because you have some really powerful transits happening with Pluto, um, not only moving into Aquarius, but trans transgressing, like moving through the final signs of Capricorn. My Capricorn sun is at like 26 degrees Capricorn. So my it's Pluto is moving through my sun, my, my sense of identity and my personal power. And it's moving through my North Node. And it's moving through my Venus. And it's... Okay, so you probably have some... Um, if you have a Capricorn stellium, you probably have really important transits going on right now that you should know about. Because Pluto... <laughs> it is sort of like Mars evolved. Or not evolved. Mars magnified. Mars is the energy of power and how we go after the things that we want, our desire... Pluto then is sort of expounded on that. And it's a generational planet. 
And these are transits that occur once in a lifetime, if at all. Okay, so I just want you to be really aware of that. Once in a lifetime. Uh, yeah, what else is going on? I already talked about Pluto goes direct. That's an increase in intensity and power. Pluto in tarot um, is associated uh, with the tower. We talked about tower moments and how things seem to fall away. If your life has been marked with things falling away, situations, people, jobs, careers, leaving um, in the present moment or in the recent past. You know, for a lot of us, COVID was the beginning, and maybe not even the beginning, but the beginning of the awareness of things wanting to change. And so Pluto is energetically like this tower that is collapsing. And I like to imagine the tower made of sand because really if you if you try to resist and hold on to something that's falling away, it, it, it kind of falls through the cracks, it falls through your hands. But the beneficial thing about the tower then is we're left with the foundation and we really get to assess and see who we are at our core what is the foundation we want to build our life upon? Because, again, with Pluto being in, in these other planets, we have not really been doing things for the greater good. We see many systems of inequality in the world. And um, as a society, as a race, we're really just learning how to be better. Um, what is it, that law that... The rate of technology doubles every 18 months. Okay, so in our history books, in our lived experiences, even just what we've seen as we've been alive, the world has changed so much. And it will continue to be changing. And it's going to change even faster and faster and faster. And so this is why when I taught in a, um, I taught a private energy workshop over the weekend, and the first thing I wanted to tell this group was it's to, before we look at external energies, we have to be really aware of what's going on within us. The tower, the energy of the tower, however you relate to that and what's been going on for you is a blessing. You get to see what's really at your core. Whatever difficulties you've been facing or are facing are really here to teach us something about ourselves. And before we go in and apply ourselves to something that we think is good for us or good for other people, to really take a moment to assess our own energy and align ourselves with that which is good for us and others and to live in that sort of authentic truth. This is where <laughs> the current astrology is sort of pointing us to this week. Nothing but the truth is required. There, there's not going to be any more room um, for surface level play for, you know, white lies. Anything that feels inauthentic or unnecessary sort of falls away at this time. Um, sun opposite Chiron at the, or around the same time that Pluto goes direct and Venus opposite Saturn. This is going to be testing our limitations of love. And again, before I say, like, what are your limits of love externally, I want you to really put your hand on your heart and ask yourself, what does it feel like to be on the receiving end of my love? Do you know what that's like? And if you don't, then this is your homework. Connect to that energy in your heart space and see what it's like to receive your own love. And, you know, are you holding anything back? Life is meant to be lived and passionately. And there's there's really no reason to be holding back anymore. We are meant to face our fears during this time in order to expand and grow in our evolution. It, it is, after all, the year of the chariot. And next year is the year of strength. The strength card. You know, the, the card where she's putting her hands in the lion's mouth. And everyone's, you know, I imagine people looking at and being like, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> That's impossible. But it's not. I think... People who live fearlessly show us what's possible. I know many times myself, I have come to know something is possible because I can see somebody else achieving it or doing it. It makes it possible. 
it opens up the space to have the desire to do something new when we could see other people doing it. So you see, we're, we're becoming aware of our own energy to say like, hey, this person is photographing dolphins in the ocean. Like, damn, that's so cool. For me to have a moment of awareness, like, oh, this is something that piques me, that interests me. Other people have done it. It's just an example. It is our jobs at this time to get to know those roots of desire. This is why the card of the month is deep listening. Really listen to that which is within you. And anyway, so sun opposite Chiron, bear your wounds. Focus on trying to feel your whole, feel whole despite your wounds. <laughs> Be tragically, wonderfully human. I think I said uh, last week or, or maybe the week prior, you know, what, look out for signs of defensiveness because they will illuminate your areas of growth. Someone says something to you and you're like, mm, oh no, I don't want to do that. That's in some ways, and again, depending on the situation, you holding yourself back. Oh, I don't want to try that. I'm afraid of that. Or I don't want to, I don't want to try that. I'm not into that. But how do you know? Be tragically and wonderfully human. Bear your wounds. Yeah, Chiron is the wounded healer. We're all looking to address our wounds now. Where has Chiron, your wounded healer, where, ha where have your wounds? And Chiron is also really karmic. It comes either from early childhood wounding. Um, it can also come from past life, energetic stuff. This is a, an incredibly powerful time to be clearing um, karmic connections, soul contracts, and, and things of that nature. And as we know, it's um, fall time and Halloween is approaching and the veil is becoming thinner and thinner. So mediumship, um, communicating with the spirit wo world is a lot easier at this time and a lot clearer at this time. So maybe you wanna um, do some communicating in that regard, maybe speak to past ancestors or speak to your spirit guides and ask for uh, direction. As you say, I surrender and just show me the way. Uh, Mars is moving into Scorpio on the 12th, so this is an increase of energy. Um, th this is happening th near the new moon in Libra, the new moon eclipse, which I talked about at the top of this video. And so around this new moon eclipse, we see an increase of energy, uh, more motivation, see the necessity of what has happened or is happening. This is a time when we can see beyond the surface level of things. Take the lesson. Take the lesson. Integrate the lesson. All right. Let's get some tarot messages. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here, for watching my channel. I want to let you know that I am posting more and more events to my meetup group. Um, there's some free events that you can come and, and talk with me and, and participate in learning um, astrology. Uh, participate in energy healing as well. And there's some classes and workshops I'm slowly on uh, rolling out. So if you want to be a part of that group, if you uh, it's free to join the group itself, and then you'll get regular emails whenever I'm posting stuff. So there, that's one thing you can do if you want to expand your knowledge, expand your learning. Right now we're going to get a message, a tarot message for the collective. For this intense week, I do have a um, an astrology workshop coming up where you can look at your personal astrology. You can bring your natal chart, and I will look at it and assess it for you to see how this um, Pluto transit may or may not be impacting you. So that's going to be on Thursday. I hope you can join. Link is below. Okay, doke.
Choose your path. All is possible. Okay. There's that energy of motivation. Uncovering treasure. Beneath the surface lies a great bounty. Yeah, so it's, it seems like we are choosing a path to look deeper into our subconscious. I feel like this is sort of where there's lots of treasure. Again, this, this energy of deep listening, um, the theme for our theme for October is pretty loud and strong here. Let's see where we go next. The lovers. The lovers is traditionally the choice card. So how cool is it that we see choosing your path? And also we have the lovers, Gemini. This is, um, right, this is Gemini energy. The lovers, it's mercurial. I like to say, you know, the planet Mercury, it rules the first 13 years of our lives. Every first impression, everything that we've come to learn. Imagine the first time you learn something, how hard it is to unlearn and do something, do that thing differently the second time around. There's a lot of conditioning um, around Mercury, okay? We have also the star, healing, Aquarius energy. So we have a lot of air going on, a lot of strong air energy right now. Ten of cups in reverse. This is ultimate happiness. It's show up, showing up in the reverse here, so maybe there's something here about... Um, move, wanting to move towards something that is happy, choosing happiness. Maybe maybe it's about becoming aware of making when we've made decisions that have not made us happy. Or actually, the chariot in reverse, look at that. We're talking about the chariot year. The chariot is very loud. This is also astrologically linked to Cancer. So we have three signs here now. We have Gemini, Aquarius, and now we have Cancer. But the way that I'm reading into this is that we really need to choose to heal happy, choose to heal uh, how we make decisions for our happiness. And what I'm getting is that this, this isn't very easy. And we have the wheel. There we go. And, and the king of cup, king of swords in reverse. It's not easy because it requires our truth. Um, energetically, when it comes to truth, we're dealing with the throat chakra. If you look at the anatomy of the body, it's literally, quite literally a funnel. You have to squeeze everything from the root, sacral, solar plexus, and the heart through the throat and into these higher realms of knowing and understanding. It's quite a difficult process. It's not, you know, it does require your bravery and it requires your loving awareness of that truth in order for in order to be aligned with that in such a way that we can then take action on it and make decisions from this aligned place. Look, ultimately, Eight of Cups, we're moving on from something. If all is possible, then we're done settling for things that bring us anything less than happiness, anything less than joy. Um... I do get this feeling of a commitment here. I'm not sure what that is about. Um, it, it could just be um, a commitment to self. I think I'll read the cards more in the reading and see what, what else comes out. But this idea of like controlling the wheel as it spins, acknowledging your truth, acknowledging the capital T truth, the greater truth, allows you to guide the wheel the wheel spins no matter what. The wheel represents that change is constant. And the medicine of the wheel is to ground ourselves, put ourselves in the center of the wheel so that we're not on the outside of the wheel experiencing vehement sort of like ups and downs, but rather to be centered and grounded. This is a challenging energy here because it's really asking us to um, be proactive in choosing our path here. Let's see where we go with the reading. Hermit underneath, or sorry, her Hermit in reverse, High Priestess in reverse, Four of Cups in reverse. Okay, somebody clearly has been avoiding the truth because 
in, in avoiding the truth, whatever this means for you, you're avoiding your, not only are you avoiding the truth, you're, how do I say this? You're not trusting yourself. You're not, um, you're actually creating a situation where you're shutting yourself off from your intuition. You're saying, hey, this download that I'm getting, this information that I'm getting, this insight that I'm having, it's just not there. Where It's like you're ignoring it. And in doing so, you're actually holding yourself captive. This is how you're holding yourself back. Because your intuition, um, I say the intuition comes from the solar plexus, your gut feelings, and your third eye up here. The seat of your intuition. And how we have here both the hermit and the high priestess. To me, this is your inner... Both of these cards speak to your inner wisdom. And this pursuit for a higher knowledge... It's quite limitless. It's literally limitless. To open yourself up to the cosmic soup above. You are opening yourself to receiving divine wisdom, sudden insight, inspiration. If you cut yourself off from that, you are, um, the word I'm looking for is undermining yourself and your abilities. Okay? It's coming up very strong here. Four of wands in the middle. This is a commitment showing up again. Okay, so what is what are we committed to? What's going on? Queen of Wands. You are magic. Queen of Wands to me is this beautiful best friend energy. She has a black cat. And the queen of any um, the, the queen of any suit nurtures the element. So I see here a commitment to nurturing the spirit. Fire is spirit. Inspiration. It's a commitment to say, hey, I am magic. I have power. I have agency. No matter what is going on that has caused you to disconnect from your intuition, to disconnect from your higher knowing, to um, whatever has been disempowering you, I see it being addressed. I see somebody taking control here. Oh, and then we have the moon. Another card associated with cancer also Piscean, you know, we are entering eclipse season. And as such, that is, you know, powerful, uh, lun two powerful lunations that are uh, forthcoming. The moon represents everything that is unknown and subconscious. So I see here that we're addressing, we're going within to address our subconscious. And how has, again, we talked about Mercury at the top of this, this reading and, and how Mercury is um, everything that is our uh, it rules the first 13 years of our lives and is represents our first impressions and how we have learned things how we have learned to do things like for the first time and it represents our conditioning we're looking at our conditioning at this time and healing our relationship to um ourselves ultimately and to and our relationship to to our to others and to situations and forgiving ourselves here for the way that we had have made choices in the past that maybe didn't lead to the kind of happiness that we wanted. And we're thinking, what's this disconnect? How come there's a disconnect here? You have to remember that, you know, with the lovers here, I gotta say, people are mirrors for us. Whatever you see in others is reflecting a bit of what is inside you as well. How trusting are you of others? How loving are you of others and compassionate? It all starts with your ability to love yourself, you know, and what you're willing to tolerate here. I think you've been um, not very tolerant of certain aspects of yourself, and therefore that's why this what's showing here is um, those things want need want and need to be addressed at this time. So this is about making a commitment to yourself to realizing that your subtle energetic system is deeply affected by the choices and choices you make day to day and the way that you live and the way that you speak the way you choose to honor your truth or not king of pentacles this is going to make you very powerful once you understand this once you understand how the subtle energetic systems work uh, within you i say the mind the thoughts that you have they energize the field the energetic field all around us our connections. This is our also, I think telepathy came up in the last couple, um, 
couple of videos, um, telepathy is mercurial as well, this air. And I want to say that our thoughts electrify the field, like charge it up. If you have a thought, if this ever happened to you, you have a thought, maybe you don't say anything, but then the person next to you kind of says the same thing, like a moment later, and you're like, I was just thinking that. I really do believe that our thoughts sort of float around us, you know, and um, whether it is receptive to other people, I think has a lot to do with how well you resonate with other people. So if you've always felt you've had a, you've had a connection with somebody, then you can trust that when you think about them, they think about you. Like I think about um, how sometimes I call my mom and she'll be like, I was just thinking about you. But part of me is like, you're always thinking about me. <laughs> no? Um, I think you get what I mean though. So once you realize that, like that was just one example, but once you realize that that kind of ability is in part because you are powerful, you, the refinement of your senses and your ability to... Um, honor that your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, your choices, the way you treat yourself, the way you bring your subconscious into your awareness in order to work with past conditionings, again, for the purpose of the goal of the chariot for this year, for a personal evolution, personal revolution, to evolve, to get into this like higher, lighter state of being. This is what this King of Pentacles here is indicating. Power. Abundance. Generousness. It spills over that when I see the King of Pentacles, I think of so much abundance that it affects every part of your life. You may, you may think you're working on one thing and then suddenly life transforms around you. And not only that, but other people benefit from that as well. To heal yourself is to heal the world. I say that all the time on this channel. Finally, the Ace of Pentacles. It's showing up in the reverse here. Don't worry. I think that this just means that this needs to be nurtured. This isn't just something that happens this week and then you're like, check, did it. Tick, done. This is a process that needs to be continuously nurtured in order to fully um, amplify and to live, to embody Pentacles' is earth to live the embodiment of what this opportunity astrologically is really bringing for us. Okay. Beneath the surface lies, look at that. Beneath the surface lies a great bounty and we end with the Ace of Pentacles. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, astrologically October is pretty nuts, okay? with Pluto going direct transits. This is an emotional time. It's a very intense time. So I really do urge you to deeply consider the theme of this month, October, deep listening. You can go back to, my, to last week's video, the first week of every month, I deliver the monthly card and read for you the, the theme and what it means. And then there's also a meditation at the end of the last one. So if you want to go back and watch that, I'll post the link um, in the corner, one of these corners, so you can go back and check it out. I want to thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you stopping by my channel. I hope this is help helpful. And if you want to go deeper, go to my meetup group. I'll post the link below uh, where you can join virtual Zoom rooms. We can talk mano a mano and get to know your astrology better and do some energy work together. Thanks.